I sing it in the van a lot. I've never sung it for anybody else here. Uh, <laughs> hey, try it out. Once I wandered in sin's dark night, there was no way Amen. to make my wrongs right. Then the old, old accuser, accuser. Yeah. to the Lord did cry, He is a sinner, and now he must die. Yep. Yep. Then I heard a voice say, oh, yeah. Father, yeah. I'll go. I'll pay the sin debt Calvary on flow. Calvary's yeah. flow. I'll bear in my body Amen. the marks of the cross to save this poor child who is sin sick and lost. For it's still the blood Amen. that saves from sin. Amen. Thank it's God. It's still the blood that cleanses within. From the highest stars in heaven to the depths of the sea, it's still the blood of Jesus that brings victory. Amen. Amen. There are those who rely on, now. on the works that they do. Go ahead. Some may even count on the times they pray through. But when the battle's over yeah, thank God. and the victory has been won, I hold to, to the, the blood. blood of the Father's only Son. Yeah, come on. For it's still the blood that saves from sin. Come on now. It's still the blood that cleanses within. From the high stars in heaven to the depths of the seas, it's still the blood of Jesus that brings victory. You want to sing a song? You want to sing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. You guys have been such a blessing. Amen. We, love, we love you guys as church. We do. God bless you, brother. Amen. Go with that say amen. amen. Appreciate that. Girls, boys, amen. Hallelujah. They're all homeschooled. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Good family. All right. I'm not going to preach long tonight, so somebody got a word on your heart. I want to just stand up and pop off for the Lord right quick. Then I'm going to read a verse of Scripture and bring you truth tonight. And I'm trying my best to get my own heart and our hearts ready for the camp meeting. And I'll be hammering down more on that, Lord willing, next Sunday night. But uh, anybody right quick before I read the Scripture. Yes, sir, brother. Amen. 22. Amen. I don't see why he wouldn't. Amen. Anybody else? Right quick. Amen. Anybody else? Right quick. Oh, today is Mrs. Desi's birthday. And you didn't tell us? And she didn't tell us? Oh, it is. Maureen, it's your birthday too? Uh, you know... You know, when you get to where you quit telling people it's your birthday, <laughs> used to you're proud of it. And then you start saying, well, and then you start saying, no, no, don't tell nobody. Well, let's see. All right, let's try it. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Miss Desi and Lorraine. Happy birthday to you. Give them a big hand. Amen. Amen. Those are two special ladies in our church, I tell you. Amen. Lorraine's been a prayer warrior and praying many, many years. And Miss Desi, we call her Goldfingers. 
Uh, and thank God for sending her our way many years ago. Amen. And uh, we appreciate that this this uh, this evening. Don't forget uh, all of our big days coming up here now. Camp meeting, and I'm going to be be asking every family to give a special camp meeting offering. I plan on it myself. And uh, uh, what we did last year is we asked every family to give maybe a maybe if you can a hundred dollar offering. And uh, you know if you take your kids anywhere. You'd spend $100 going there and eating out one time and gas and everything if you got a family. So let's um, you can cough it up, give a little bit for the Lord and for the camp meeting as we'll be, we'll be needing it here in the next few weeks. Take your Bible. Turn to Proverbs chapter 22 tonight. And uh, we're just going to look at one, one little verse of Scripture here tonight. And one word, one word. This will help you at your job tomorrow. This will help you at school. This will help you at your home, with your house, and especially with your Christian life. One word. Proverbs 22, verse 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. The word diligent. Diligent. I want to preach tonight on that one little word, diligence. The word diligence means constant, careful effort, persevering, hard work, hard working, stead, steady, uh, painstaking, taking pains to get the job done that God had given us to do. Steady, careful, Constant hard work. If we're going to have a good choir, it takes steady, constant good work. Just that little choir practice this evening helped us. You have to work at it. You have to work at things. Now, I'm not talking about working for your salvation. I'm talking about being diligent in the work that God has given you to do. If they ran McDonald's, like the average church is ran, uh, they'd go out of business and go broke in less than a month. If McDonald's manager got up and said, well, y'all just come when you feel led and do whatever you feel led to do, well, they'd go broke. They couldn't operate. People, we can't have a church. We can't have a church that's worth anything with this people have an attitude of, well, if I go all right, if I don't, it's all right. If I sing all right, if I don't, it's all right. If I give, it's all right. If I don't, it's all right. Can't have a church like that. We've got to have some people that are diligent in our business. No factory, no business, nobody would be able to operate under such terms as that. To have a great church, the church that God wants us to have, it's going to take hard work, and diligent. Now listen to me. Everybody who sings, works, teaches Sunday school, bus workers, years ago there was a diamond they found in Africa, one of the, if not the, largest diamond ever found in 1905 in Africa. They found that in the center of this diamond was a little flaw. And because of that, they decided that they would break it into two pieces and, and have two big, large diamonds rather than one diamond with a flaw in it. So one man was hired, or a group of men, was hired to, to uh, split that diamond. You know, they'll take them things, and they'll take a razor, sharp razor blade, and hit it like with a hammer, bam, and have to hit it at the right angle, the right pressure, the right way to, to open or split that diamond. They studied it, they studied it, and they studied it for months. These guys studied that diamond. They looked at it every way you can look at it. They held it, they weighed it, they did, they did tests on other things, they did everything they could think of. They wanted to make sure that diamond was cut right. No mistake. Could not afford a mistake. They didn't want it shattering into four or five pieces and devaluing that great diamond. So they studied it for months and months and months. Finally, 
they took the steel blade in 1908 and they put it on that diamond and the guy came down with a hammer, bam, and struck it and nothing happened. It didn't do it. They said, well, maybe you need to put just a little more pressure on it. He took it back that hammer like that again and hit that diamond blade tip uh, blade and bow, that thing popped open perfectly and he passed out, fainted. That's how nervous and scared and how serious he was about that. I heard that story and I thought, what if we had that much respect and seriousness about every little boy or girl in our Sunday school classes or on those buses? They are more precious to God than that diamond. They, your child and, and our children here are more precious to God than one of those uh, ever diamond in the world put together. And yet we haphazardly, jokingly, hit and miss and up and down. We, sometimes we'll pray with them. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we'll teach them a Bible. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we'll let them hear good music. Sometimes we'll let them watch anything they want to on TV and are so, so slipshod in our diligence with the work of the Lord. Now, I want to read you about a man right quick, and I want you to listen to what he said. This man um, was named Dr. James Furman. He made up his mind six things when he was 19 years old. I also started preaching when I was 19 years old. When this boy was 19... He promised the Lord six things. I don't know how old you are tonight, and I don't know how old these ladies are that just had birthdays today, but it's not too late to make the Lord these promises. Promise number one. He said, I will never criticize another person unless I call to remembrance my own sins. Boy, wouldn't that be a good lesson for us to learn. I, I tell Kelly all the time, something will come up, we'll say something about and I always ask her, I always say, we better make sure because we don't get what we deserve. We better not be too hard on them because God sure has been merciful to us. Make sure you call. Some people are good at finding fault with everybody else and never see the fault in their own life. You just remember when you're pointing your finger at somebody, there's three pointing back at you. And you better remember that. He resolved that. Number two, the second promise he made. He said, when my heart gets cold, I will strive in prayer to God for deliverance. I will find the cause and guard against it in the future. That means whenever I feel myself getting cold on God, I promise God I'll go somewhere and I'll pray until you warm my heart back up again and I'll find out what made me get messed backslid and try to stay away from it. That's good advice. That's good diligence in your Christian life. Number three, the third thing he promised God, he said, I will never go to bed one night in my life until I've tried to learn more about God and His Word. Never, not one night of your life, go to bed without having spent some time in the Word of God. That's good advice. Number four, he said, I will say nothing, I will say nothing to deliberately hurt someone. I will say nothing to deliberately hurt someone. Now let's be honest tonight. How many of you have ever caught yourself, uh, you're mad at somebody or you don't like them and you, uh, an opportunity comes up and you stick something in right there just to try to hurt another person's view of that person? We've all done that, right? Yes, you have. You might not even understand what I said, but you've done it. I'm telling you, we ought to make up our mind. I will never say something to deliberately hurt someone. Number five, he said this. I will leave as soon as possible any company which draws my thoughts away from eternal things. That's good advice. He said, I'm not going to hang around a place or people that pull me away from living right with God. That's just common sense. That's just plain old common sense. 
Now you may have to work with a bunch of old devils that cuss and drink and corrals and raise cane all the time and you can't help it and you have to ask God to protect you. But you can help where you go on Friday night and Saturday night and how you spend your weekends and who you spend your time with. Say amen right there. That's right. Number six, and this is last, he said, I'll never let a day go by without having secret meditation and prayer. I'll never live one day unless I have got by myself and prayed and spent time with God. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not fussing at y'all tonight. Thank God for you. Uh, but from the way most of you have been raised, uh, uh, diligence is... Uh, you're doing pretty good, really, considering the way some of y'all was raised. And I appreciate your diligence. I mentioned her a while ago playing that piano. I appreciate uh, the way she does. I do. I appreciate Jimmy. I appreciate I could just go all over this church naming people. I appreciate the way you do stuff. I appreciate your value. I know sometimes you sacrifice to be here. I know sometimes you sacrifice. Uh, there's a lady sitting right here tonight who pulled out a $100 bill this morning and gave it to me, and she's not rich. Uh, she's sitting here tonight, and she said, Brother Danny, take this and use it on the camp meeting or whatever is bad. And I said, thank you, sister, and that got me started mentioning it to you tonight. I appreciate that. You know, God will bless us. You know, we can have a good church if we want one. You can have a sorry one if that's what you want, and you can have a good one if that's what you want, and it all depends on us and what we want from God. I appreciate I appreciate y'all and your work. I've heard people say, uh, Brother Danny, I just have a little job at church. I know it's not much, but I tell you, if all you do is open them doors and turn the lights on, if all you do is stand up here, you think nobody don't notice, but you stand right here in this choir right here, or maybe you stand right up here and there's 15 people in front of you and you think you're not doing this. Listen, God looks down. He sees everybody that gets in this choir. God looks down. He sees everybody who opens your mouth for the glory of of God, and I'm telling you, you are not wasting your time. God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you if you'll do something for Him like that. Amen. I mean, uh, they said one time they give a job a uh, 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 guy come to church. He didn't know a whole lot, wasn't real educated. He said, "I'd like to do something." And back when they rung a the bell, remember. How many of y'all remember when they used to ring a bell out in front of the church? And uh, when it come church time, some old fella get out there and go, "Ding." Ding. You could hear it all over the community. And uh, uh, they used to ring him bell. They give him a job. They give him a job. They said, your job is to ring that bell. He didn't preach. He didn't teach Sunday school. His job was to ring the bell. And that man stood out there every Sunday morning for 52 years and rang that bell. That may not seem like a lot to you, but I tell you, buddy, when God gets that old fellow in heaven, the Lord looked down and said, buddy, you did a good job. 52 years in a row, I was on my job ringing that bell. Glory to God, I'd rather ring a bell for the glory of God than be some fool like Kanye West standing up giving a speech and don't make no sense to nobody else. Amen? Thank God. Hallelujah. I'm glad we can do something diligently for the Lord. Amen? God gives you a little job to do. Do it with diligence. Preachers, be willing to be a servant. You'll never be a leader till you learn how to serve. You'll never be a pastor till you learn how to follow a pastor. You'll never be in a position of leadership until you learn how to submit to leadership. You'll never be anything for God until you're willing to be nothing for that's what God wants you to be. Amen. Amen. We got a lot of people want to be want, want something great. We don't have many people want to be a nobody for Jesus. And the Lord wants that a lot of times. Amen. Adoniram Judson, the great missionary, received a call from a big shot downtown fashionable church. It thrilled his family, and they said, let's take it, Daddy. Let's go. Big downtown church, big salary, lots of money. We'll have a life of ease. And he said, no, my work ain't here. God's called me the mission field. And buddy, that old boy went to Burma. Burma, jungle. And he went six years before he won anybody the Lord, his first convert. Turn down the big church with a big salary.
glory and went to the jungle to be a missionary and preached for six years before he had one convert. By the time that old boy was gone, years later, there's a hundred churches on that island and 50,000 converts for the glory of God. You know, a Mormon missionary, you know, it's amazing considering what they believe they could ever get anybody in their group. How do they ever get anybody? I'll tell you how. Diligence. If Baptists had half the diligence that Mormons have, you know how come they can ride bicycles all over the community and knock on every door? Because the devil ain't fighting them. You make up your mind right here tonight. I'm going to come and go visiting Saturday morning, and all kinds of things will happen. Ken folks will call and won't come see you. You and your wife are getting a fight Friday night. You'll stay up and watch a late, 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 good for nothing show and can't get out of bed on Sunday morning, Saturday morning. Listen, the devil fights us because we're on the right track, people. Amen. A Mormon missionary gets in one out of seven homes and has to visit 300 hours to make one convert. 300 hours. Imagine if you went soul winning in 300 hours. I did. How many converts you'd have? More than one. I promise you. Reading our Bible. The other Sunday night, I got up here. Might have been last Sunday night. I can't remember. Was it last Sunday night? I said, read the book of Proverbs. You want wisdom? Read the book of Proverbs. And I had three people this week. Who was uh, Jimmy, Brother Wayne, Gail. Who else was it? Phyllis. Said, Brother Danny, I did what you said. Read Proverbs. Said, I just want you to know some, we do listen sometimes. I said, amen. Thank God. Listen, hey, are you diligent in your Bible reading? Are you diligent? What does diligent mean? Constant constant. You'll never get it hitting and missing. You'll never get it opening up, reading two or three verses and then skip three or four days and watch the view all morning and then pick it up on Friday and read two or three more verses and then on Saturday night say, oh gosh, it's Saturday night already and I ain't read my Bible all week. I better read it because he'll be fussing in the morning. I, mean, I, I, bet, I bet when we get to heaven you'll be mad at me for not fussing at you more. I bet when we get to heaven you'll say, Brother Danny, why didn't you grab me? come back and grab me? Because I don't want to get my eyes clawed out. Uh, but that's what probably needs to be done. I'm telling you, we ought to be diligent in our Bible reading. We ought to be diligent in our prayer. I mean, I made up my mind last Sunday night. I was a little bit discouraged last Sunday. I mean, some things happened and some things happened today too. But some good things happened too, thank God. I made up my mind last Sunday. I said, I'm going to pray. I told her, I said, I'm going to pray 40 hours this week and visit 40 hours. And I don't know, there ain't that many hours in a week if you got to do everything else. I have to make my radio programs diligently. I have to uh, make visits. One day, I was in two hospitals 50 miles apart. I don't know if these hospitals are ever ever different direction. How about, how about let's all go to the same hospital uh, when we get sick? All at the same time, but it ain't that way. I mean, it's Marion, it's down below Hickory, and I was running here and running up and down the interstate and, and trying to get my grass mowed and trying to get this done, trying to get that done, trying to get this done. And I said, yeah, I said, I was going to pray 40 hours this week. And I got to pray, and I was just like, yes, couldn't stay awake. Went to sleep. Next morning, all right, time to pray, Brother Danny. I got down, I said, oh, Lord. And I thought, this ain't done. That ain't done. This ain't done. Oh, Lord. Help. This ain't done. That ain't. Do you do that? As soon as you start praying, you think about a hundred things you should be doing. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. I say, well, you devil, you didn't tell me to do it when I was watching a ball game the other day. When you're watching a ball game, the devil don't never say, you ought to be doing this. When you're playing on that iPad, the devil don't they say, now, but as soon as you start reading your Bible, oh, you need to do this. Oh, you need to do that. Oh, you need to do the other. We're battling against spirits, people. We're battling. We're in a battle. You have to be diligent. You don't just do it when you want to and feel like it. You do it because you're supposed to. Amen. And you work. And you work. Amen. Have respect. You ought to teach your kids to respect church. I bet you these kids in here right now got their feet up on the bench in front of them. Boy, you better be glad my mom didn't see you. You know what? My mom would not let us put our feet on the couch in our own house, and we wasn't rich. We'd have to take our shoes off. I go through here all the time, go through and put your feet down, boy. Put your feet down, boy. You raised in a barn. Put your feet. I mean, what's wrong with teaching them? Listen, I don't think they'll bring food in here. 
I've seen people sit there and feed them Cheerios the whole service. Not, not even a little bitty baby got to eat sometimes. Lord, some of you can ride a bicycle and sit back there and eat uh, the whole service. That ought to be taught. This is God's house. We honor God. We worship here. We can tell where some of y'all sit. There's a big pile of wrappers every Monday morning. Not only are you sorry and let's sit there and eat the whole service, you're too sorry to eat and put them in your pocket and throw them down the carpet on God's house. And all God's people says, Amen. Amen. You know that's right. Amen. Lord, have mercy. I was preaching somewhere one night and there was a little old demon about that high. I mean, and everybody thought he was so cute. When they're tearing up the service, they ain't cute. Now, if they're sick and crying, so can't, that's one thing. But this little boy, he was doing like this. He's going, ee, 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 ee. And everybody around him was laughing at him. And they was all going, oh, look. And I was up here preaching. I felt stupid up here. I wanted to stop and say, okay, let's just all stop and watch a little brat. <laughs> I didn't plan on saying none of this here tonight. I'm talking about being diligent. Diligent in God's house. I can tell I can tell in here tonight who respects me and who don't. Not that I'm anything, but the office deserves respect. I go, but hey, your kids talk to me. Well, I'm walking and say, hey, Danny, I know your mom and daddy backslid. That's right. That's right. Listen, when I went to school, we had a principal in our school. His name was Mr. Jack Kirstein. And buddy, we called him Sir. We called him. Mr. If I'd have passed him in the hall and say, "What's up, Jack?" <laughs> Woo! I mean, it ain't like school is now. Ain't done none of this stuff like time out. Put you on the oh, Lord, buddy. The principal took me in the office. I didn't say, "What's up, Jack?" I, all I did was told something. I told something and got in trouble. Me and some boys. And I remember the principal got me in there. He said, "Dan." Yes, yeah, so you can call me anything you want to. Dan, and I've been over like I've been over like that. He got that paddle out and go wham. I'm telling you, I went back and sat down. I couldn't. I, I sat sideways for for about an hour. Them boys said it hurt. Die. No, I felt like I was on fire. I mean, he lit me up, buddy. I mean, you know what? I would have have killed us if I'd have said, "How you doing, Jack?" We said, hey, you, Mr. Kirstein, how are you, sir? Isn't it a shame when we don't even teach kids to respect authority and the office or the pastor or the teacher or the Sunday school teacher or anybody who's in authority, even adults, teach them to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, thank you, thank you, sir. There ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. You say, oh, that's old-fashioned. We're in a liberated day. I know it, but what's wrong with a little respect for God's people in God's house once in a while? Amen. Diligence and our soul winning. Let me tell you a little story right quick, and I'm going to be done here in a minute. Figuratively speaking, an old lady had a son. This old lady's son got arrested and put in jail for murder, and he was not guilty. And they knew he wasn't guilty, the family did. But the judge and the court didn't see it like that and sentenced the boy to prison. He went to prison for murder. While he was in prison, listen to me, mamas and daddies. If you've got a wayward child, this woman scrubbed floors for 11 years to pay money to pay a lawyer. Eight hours a day, six days a week, 3,500 nights, miles and miles of floors. She scrubbed until her back nearly killed her. And then got paid a lawyer, and he got a reporter, and they went and dug up the facts and set that boy free. She worked 11 years every night to see her boy get free. It wouldn't hurt us, any of us. Some of y'all, I have, I have people in my family in prison, sins prison, not behind bars necessarily. What's wrong with us getting down on our knees and shit like she scrubbed floors every night? Let's get down to saying, God, God, 11 years. That's diligence. 
How about doing that for your brother? How about doing that for your family, your sister, your son, or your daughter? And when he got home, she baked him a cake and sat and watched him eat it. Her son had come home. Her diligence paid off. There is no poverty, listen to me, there is no poverty that can overtake diligence. If you'll work hard enough, you can get yourself out of a mess and do right. By perseverance, old saying is, the snail reached the ark. Here come an eagle, 60 mile an hour, zoom, right in that door. Here come a rabbit, running that door. Poor little old snail, way back yonder. But he just kept on and on and on and on. So Phoenix going to rain and on. No wonder, 120 years, that's why the Lord gave me a lot Took that little guy 120 years to crawl from wherever he was. And he finally went in that door and the rain fell. Keep it up. You know what your problem is, some of you? You do real good for a while and quit. Do real good for a while and quit. Keep it up. Diligence. Diligence. I close with this. One step won't take you very far. Keep on walking. One word won't tell people who you are. Keep on talking. One inch won't make you very tall. Keep on growing. One deed won't do it all. Keep on going. Let's make up our mind. It's camp meeting time. Let's get diligent. Let's be prayed up. You know what I'd love to see? You can't work this up in the flesh. I'd love to see us so fired up. When that camp meeting gets here, it's like somebody hit this place with a Holy Ghost match. Pow! The fire of God fall in this place. We could send people back out of here, serve God all over this country. But that's, it's going to take diligence in our life. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Diligence. Diligence.